Hello, welcome to Wide Up Middle School. I hope you enjoy our presentation on Stealing You Away with Steel Structures. Hi, I'm Leighton Anderson and I'm in sixth grade. I'm Logan Goodwin and I'm in sixth grade. I'm Sarah Robinson and I'm in seventh grade. I'm Spencer Shalee and I'm in seventh grade. Why don't catch just been hit by a tornado? Now what? With iron and steel, it's the most uh, powerful metal, so if we had a whole building made out of that, then nothing could stop it. The pros are housing people whose homes were destroyed, um, preventing leaks, and also withstanding hurricane winds. Some of the cons of building a metal structure is the city doesn't current, this, currently, this water does not have enough funds to build it. Um, we would have to build two or three of them. And also, water does not have any extra land to build these. So after Wadoke has just been hit, so who's responsible? If you're an individual without a plan for after you've been hit with a natural disaster and your city has a plan, wouldn't that feel better if your city took that burden off your shoulders? When emotions get high and you feel so overwhelmed with what are you going to do? How are you going to house your family? How are you going to take care of your house? And when are you going to get a new house? Uh, with the building, it just takes off relief of housing you for a couple months until you do, do get your house rebuilt and it just takes the hope of having a new place to live for a while. These are pictures of the effects of a natural disaster and some organizations that help. After, after a disaster struck White Oak, would a uh, volunteer organization such as Red Cross and Highway 80 Rescue Mission would come to provide the supplies needed to survive without a home, water, uh, food, etc. But since White Oak doesn't have anywhere, any of them near them, we would have to go to them. So how can White Oak be able to afford these large steel buildings? Some ways that Wada could, some ideas of how Wada would be able to afford them would be bond elections, grants, renting the structure, and you know they can rent them off to small 1A schools. Cause like a couple years back, Wada had their problem with clay water, so like maybe small schools such as Big Sandy would like to come over to Wada. Also, business expos like oil companies needing to show off their ideas. Also, Region Seven conferences such as principal conferences student council conferences, stuff of that nature. Also, wedding receptions and family reunions. Surveys show 10 people out of, I mean, seven people out of 10 um, have a plan in case of a natural disaster, so safety is not a concern. Is this idea even worth your time? Do you consider your city's safety or your city's size and future important? I hope that answer is yes, but if you have denied it, watch, please watch as these ideas come to life. And these are our sources. Would you want your town looking like this, all destroyed, and people having nowhere to go, and not knowing what to do? Or would you prefer for your, house, for your town to look like this, where they still building, your citizens safe, even though the houses would be destroyed, you would have resources to be able to come help you, but also your citizens are safe and you have a place for your people to go. If you're not 100% sure or you have any doubts of what our idea is, Logan has made a program to show you our idea. This is what the exterior would look like. Of course it wouldn't be able to be that big, but yeah. There are two doors and they are made out of 
metal, so there's no windows or anything to break. And then this is what the interior would look like. There's bunks, food containers, and water containers, bathrooms, and medical supplies. So, is there any questions? I'll ask one. You're, uh, you, you did do kind of a unique approach to, to build structures for people to go to. How did you come about that idea? Actually, it was the boys' idea, so I'll let them explain that. Well, well we originally thought we were going to make bunkers for people to stay in, but then we decided that people really don't need to be living underground for three or four days and so we came up with an idea with steel structures because I had seen something on TV that talked about structures that can withstand tornadoes and hurricanes and stuff so we came up with that idea. In, in working in this uh, project what did you find uh, was the most challenging with the, with the grade levels and the time span? Um, it would probably be the like the difference between our class times like theirs is in third period and ours is in first so we'd send them a message but then we'd have to wait till the next day to get their response. And about how long did you spend on this? How many days? Um, probably weeks. three to four weeks. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Do you feel that um, I mean, when you were working together to do this to me um, We've been involved in these things before, but did you realize that in doing this, how big this something like this really is? I mean, to just to be planning for it, and if there wasn't a disaster coming, people would have to come in and be part of it. And from the surrounding communities, did that when they were doing the research and stuff, was that something that maybe overwhelmed you a little bit? As well as like, as I definitely realized, like, with the like when Mr. Ronnie, I forgot his last name, oh, came to talk, when he came and talked for us, like you definitely realize what his stress would be for like having, because he was doing all of Greg County and we're just doing White Oak. So you definitely understood what his job would be.